Hi. Our paper, Prompt Programming for Large Language Models Beyond the Few-Shot Paradigm, explores new methods of prompting autoregressive language models. We use GPT-3 as a case study. It's a state-of-the-art language model released by OpenAI last year. It's an autoregressive model which takes input, uh, an input prompt and predicts a likely continuation. It's the biggest neural network trained to date at 175 billion parameters. When uh, testing the performance of GPT-3, researchers usually use a method called few-shot prompting, where a number of solved examples of the benchmark task are provided in the prompt before an unsolved task the language model is expected to complete. For example, for an English to French translation task, the examples are pairs of English phrases and their correct French translation. Uh, the target task is an English phrase at the end of the prompt. GPT-3 understands that the pattern should continue and a French translation should follow. This is the method the OpenAI team used in their paper, Few Shot Mo uh, Language Models are Few Shot Learners by Brown et al. This ability is sometimes called meta-learning, alluding to the ability to perform tasks just from seeing similar examples in the prompt instead of learning it using fine-tuning. However, uh, Few Shot prompting is not the only method of controlling GPT-3 and measuring its performance on benchmarks. We argue that other prompt formats can be more effective, including prompts with no examples of the task at all, usually called zero-shot prompts. Our basic argument is as follows. GB3 was trained on a massive varied corpus of language in the wild, meaning text and, uh, from the internet and books. Because GB3 was trained on real human data, its idea of what should come next is very similar to our ideas about what makes sense. So with a few caveats, to prompt GB3, we can think about which prompts we would expect a human to complete in a way that accomplishes the desired task. So most effective prompts resemble the training distribution, which is largely made up of natural language and usually not in contrived lists like the few-shot format. Though few-shot is a very powerful technique for task specification, just as demonstrations are valuable for conveying a task in human communication, other formats which simply describe the desired task instead of showing the examples can be just as effective. We demonstrate the success of these zero-shot prompts using a French to English translation benchmark. OpenAI's results on the benchmark, and in fact all benchmarks they tested, suggest that performance increases with the number of examples provided in the prompt. 64-shot prompts perform significantly better than zero-shot prompts. We re-ran the translation benchmarks with an alternative zero-shot prompt, um, or several, including one that used a colon to indicate which sentence was French and a colon to indicate the completion should be English. The simple colon prompt and other zero-shot prompts we used are more naturally humans and also more effective at indicating the desired task to GPT-3. We also tested a few-shot version of the simple colon prompt, which includes examples. We tested two sizes of GPT-3 using OpenAI's API, Babbage and Curie, with 0, 1, and 10-shot versions of OpenAI's prompt and our simple colon prompt. For OpenAI's prompt, similar to in the paper, uh, zero-shot scored the lowest and the 10-shot the highest. For the simple colon prompt, zero shot has equivalent performance to the ten shot and outperforms OpenAI's ten shot prompt, so the examples aren't even helpful. GPT-3 success with zero shot prompts show there is some ambiguity with the phrase meta learning, which is acknowledged in the OpenAI paper. Is GPT-3 actually learning the function demonstrated by the examples, uh, or do the examples just communicate what the intended task is, which GPT-3 already knows how to perform? Our zero-shot prompt produces the same performance as the few-shot prompt, suggesting that uh, the examples are not teaching GPT-3 how to translate. Of course, it's infeasible to learn how to translate from just a few examples. So the examples are more suitably described as task location rather than meta-learning. So some takeaways from our paper. Um, further thought is required to properly evaluate large language models, as they can be extremely sensitive to the prompt format used. As language models become more powerful, new prompt formats will become practical, including ones which closely imitate human communication. So this will usher in a new paradigm for human-computer interaction in which anyone who is fluent in natural language can be a programmer. Thanks for listening.